Check the description for the following discount codes. I like to try and keep my videos short and concise, but I have a feeling this one might run on a little bit as there's quite a lot to go through here. We're taking a look at the new direct drive wheelbase, um, the Forte model specifically from Acer Tech, and their Forte wheel. Now, you may already know Acer Tech from the pedals they released, I think it must have been last year, about early last year, and they were great pedals, excellent build quality, brilliant fit and finish, and performed really well. The Invicta models did have quite a controversial brake pedal that had almost no travel in it, and some people either really liked that or they really hated it. I was somewhere in the middle. It, it was very, very hard and didn't move very far, and if you put the time and then you get used to it, then it's not too bad. But like for me, I have a lot of people come and use my rig here, and people will get in, go to brake, and it's like, well, the brake pedal doesn't work hard, it's not moving. So that was very Marmite. But you know, the, the products themselves from Acer Tech, the, the, all the pedals they did were, ju were just excellent. So I was really excited to see what we've got here today, and I've been testing them obviously and using them for the last couple of weeks, and I must say, they are excellent. I have almost no complaints whatsoever, and I think they're priced very competitively for the quality, the fit, the finish, and the usability that we have. So if you don't want to watch the rest of the review, basically it's all good. <laughs> and there's a link in the description. That's it, video done. Just, just go buy some stuff from Acer Tech. But for the rest of you that want to hang around and get the nitty gritty, let's go into what's probably going to be a longer video than I would like it to be. So we'll look at the wheelbase first of all. Um, this is the box that it comes in. You can see sat in the background here. Let me just give you a little close up of this thing. It weighs an absolute ton. This is a Forte model, so it is eight newton meters of torque. This is their bespoke quick release, or at least the back half of it, and that is just brilliant. You'll see how that works later in the video. We've got some LED strips, two at this side, two at this side. This front piece actually comes off. You undo the four bolts here to allow you to use a front mount that I've got here. I'll show you that in a second. Um, on the underneath, we have T-nuts in sliders already comes pre-fitted for bolting straight down to, you know, aluminium profile rig, or not even necessarily aluminium profile rig, but just a, you know, a normal wheel deck with holes in. You can literally just plonk this on top, line up the T-nuts and do them up. And they're M6, same as you would find on pretty much every cockpit ever. Um, that's yeah, that's all that's on the underneath. Four of those. On the back, we've got the power input, the USB-C for the wheelbase to go back to your PC. We've then got a power and an emergency stop button input as well, and then a five is it five port? Yeah, a five port USB hub. So that can either be used for plugging in, you know, your Acer Tech pedals and forthcoming other Acer Tech products, maybe shifters or handbrakes, whatever they come out with, they have got a lot in development. Or you can plug literally any USB device you like into the back of this. And I think that is an excellent idea because as PC sim racers, we have so many peripherals and add-ons, whether it's wind systems, you know, from, from SRS or a tactile setup or whatever it may be, handbrake shifters, etc. Um, maybe even just charging, you know, a tablet that we use to run a digital display. Having five <laughs> USB ports there is just a great idea. There's neat and tidy on the back of the rig as well. You haven't got to buy, you know, another USB hub and have it dangling somewhere out the way. And also USB hubs can vary greatly in their quality. And what we get here, along with everything else from Acer Tech, is really high quality USB hub. So you're not gonna suffer bandwidth or dropout issues. And it's all, they're all USB-C as well, obviously you can use USB-C to A adapters if you need to. Um, but it's just, just a, nice, a nice little touch there. So I have already said the, the build quality is excellent. Everything in here is metal. Um, what was that I looked at the other day? The, the Logitech G Pro and the Thrustmaster stuff, which has a lot of plastic construction and that horrible nylon based quick release on the Thrustmaster was just, that's a big fail really. Um, there's none of that here, everything is, is metal. And with the way they're doing these, you've got your La Prima, which is your entry level, 12 newton meter wheelbase, 
the Forte, which is when you're 18 newton meter wheelbase, and then the Invicta, which is your 27 newton meter wheelbase. What they've said, because I had a long conversation with one of the guys from Mason, about an hour and a half on a, in a video call the other week. Their, strat their strategy is that they want to make everything to the same quality, the same sort of quality boards inside, the same materials, regardless of whether it's La Prima, Forte, or Invicta. And the way they're differentiating between the entry level and the top and the different price points is to remove features and functionality rather than using lesser quality materials. So if we looked for comparison, let's say we look at um, Fanatic pedal sets, their entry level pedal set feels vastly different in materials and build quality to their top pedal set, which is currently still the V3s. And that's not what you see with Acer Tech. Their entry level wheelbase or pedal set is the same materials, the same build quality as their Invicta stuff. They just remove functionality. So using the wheelbase as an example, which is what obviously we're looking at today, the La Prima doesn't come with the USB hub. It doesn't come with an emergency stop input and it doesn't have any LEDs on the outside and also it only runs at 12 newton meters of torque. So there's an example of where everything, like the, the casing, the, the, the internal structure, everything else is exactly the same. They've just removed those features and that functionality to be able to bring it down to a lower price point for those of us that don't want to go ball deep straight away and spend big money. And speaking of money, this is 882 euros um, obviously that's excluding VAT for those of us that are in the UK at least that's what it says on the website in front of me right there I don't actually know how that would translate to pounds then because saying it excludes VAT would imply that when we buy it we're going to have to pay another 20% which would put it nearer the what 1100 pound mark something like that I had previously thought that the pricing stayed very similar from pounds to euros. Maybe it's something worth just clearing up with Acer Tech. Um, probably should have done that before I started recording the video. But, um, but I've literally only just spotted in, in the sort of small text underneath the price that it says excluding VAT. So we shall see. In fact, I'll try and clarify and then I'll put up in the edit what it will be in pounds. Uh, I'm sure I can find out about too much bother. So that's what this one costs. It's the middle of the range one and that puts it so if we compare that what's a fanatic dd1 that's about 1100 quid isn't it thousand pound 1100 quid something like that and that would be the sort of model you compare this to the invicta one would be compared to the dd2 for example so they're in fact yeah if we look at it that way in including vat that probably prices them very similarly to those fanatic offerings offerings which is where it needs to be and of course we've instantly got a much better quick release in fact i'm going to put a video clip up of me demonstrating the quick release now, uh, I think in this video clip you may also see me demonstrating any flex, um, of which there is none, I might add. The only flex you see in this clip is my rig, my whole rig, the GT Amiga Prime Light, just sinking into the carpet a little bit as I go forwards and backwards, trying to bend the wheel and the quick release. But the quick release is so easy, you know, as you can see in the video clip there. You literally just take your two fingers um, and you squeeze. In fact, we'll cut back to me and I'll show you here. And you squeeze just this little lever here. And that's all you do. You can literally just, it's on, it's on there. And as you see in the video, two fingers, grab it, lift it up and off it comes. Um, you can see there is like a V taper here and a V taper opposing on the end of the wheelbase here. And you know, it literally just, slots on like that. You don't even need to squeeze it to put it back on, as you just see there, and that's how it comes off. It almost like it almost feels like it shouldn't be as sturdy as it is, but it's just so simple. You know, it really you just you're just pulling this in and that allows it to slide up and back out again. As I say, even without squeezing it, you can just set it on the top and it will just slide on without any resistance or any pressure whatsoever. And there's no play in this quick release as you see in the video clip a second ago there's just nothing it's really really good they have designed um the spring is a spring obviously in here they've designed this in such a way that should you apply like a ridiculous amount of force 
in one of the wrong directions. So we're not talking in use, but if you were to try and like break it off, for example, they've incorporated a release mechanism where the quick release will release itself and come off. And that's an interesting point actually. Um, and this is why this video is gonna be long because there's so much to say. One of the things Acer Tech said to me when I was chatting to them was that they, what they're trying to do is design the best products they can at a sensible price point. Um, you could obviously go, you could, you could make it out of diamond if you wanted to, but that would make the price ridiculous and it's just silly. So within the constraints of you know being reasonably priced. They wanna make the very best products that they can. And they've taken feedback from us reviewers and testers already and made changes based on things that we've said. What made me think of this was just talking about this quick release. Because one of the things they've changed is the spring pressure in the quick release. Because some of us during testing were able to get it off, as I just described, by applying force in the wrong direction. But we thought it was a bit too easy to do that. So they then went and I think they measured a batch of springs to measure the, the specification. And they were all at the bottom end of the sort of tolerance that they wanted. So they're changing them all going forward to be a slightly stronger spring so that should you for any reason, I mean, you, you wouldn't be, but we just said, yeah, maybe it could be a little bit stronger, you know, just us being picky sim racers as we are. So they listened to that straight away, got straight on the case and have changed it. And the same goes with um, a firmware update. There was um, a couple of things, again, as us testers like to do, we give our feedback that we didn't like, they instantly made an update to the firmware to make those changes. So they want to make the best products they can. They wanna to listen to us as reviewers and you guys as the community and really try and get things you know, spot on to how we like it. The other thing they're doing is what they want you to do is they'll basically wanna try and cover all, all types of sim racer from a certain level upwards because even their entry level stuff, 12 Newton meter direct drive wheelbase, is not gonna be as cheap as a Logitech G920, obviously that's, that's impossible. But what they want you to be able to do is buy the La Prima, whether it's a wheelbase or pedals, you know, as, a, as, as entry level, and then as you progress with your sim racing hobby or career, or however you wanna describe it, and you decide, you know what, I need a bit more torque, or I wanna go from a low cell brake pedal to a hydraulic brake pedal, they're doing upgrade kits. And we're even talking about the wheelbases here as well. Because they use the same housings, same motors, same encoders, 22 bit, four million um, points of resolution per 360 degree rotation, which I'll talk about in a sec, it's just ridiculous. Um, that's the T nuts you can hear sliding around in case you think there's something loose inside, there isn't. Um, you can literally buy a La Prima and then after a year go, do you know what? I want to go from 12 newton meters to 18 or to 27. And you can then buy the PCB, a bigger power supply. You can even add the LED strips that are missing if you wanted to, to make it that um, Forte or Invicta, you know, wheelbase that you're kind of upgrading to. And the same goes for the pedals. You'll be able to buy the hydraulic uh, brake pedal module and swap that out for your uh, low cell one and things like this. So. They really want to try and, you know, get you to come in at the lower level, you know, if you need to start out there. And then as you grow as a sim racer, you can, their products will grow with you. And I think that's a really cool idea. Now, some of you might say, you know, Carl, this is all just sales spiel that they're giving you to pass on to us as viewers. But, you know, having spoken to them in person, I, I, I don't think that's the case. They genuinely seem like that this is their strategy they even said to me we don't want you to use clickbaity titles or you know anything to try and get attention onto the video sort of not sneakily but guiding people in with well clickbaity titles is probably the easiest way to describe it you know what they wanted was just a, a simple thumbnail and a title that describes what the video is which is a you know review of the acer tech forte wheelbase and wheel you know and that's the sort of uh, thumbnails and titles that I use anyway. I tend to not to use clickbaity stuff. I don't think it's really necessary. You know, those extra few clicks you might get, it's really not that important. You know, it's more important to be honest and accurate with people, which is what I try to be, you know, with all my reviews and content. So that was, that was from them specifically telling me, don't use clickbaity titles, you know, and it's, or, or thumbnails. Because even though statistically they would make more sales by having me get more viewers in, 
They didn't want me to do it. And I, like I said, I wouldn't do it anyway. It's not how I work. But this is the attitude they have. They want to make great products. They're taking feedback from us as reviewers and testers. And they're encouraging us not to you know, sell the product and not be salesy and clickbaity about things. And that's the attitude I get from them, that they really enjoy, you know, Andre particularly enjoys just doing stupid ideas and making them become a reality. One of the things they did um, at one of the shows was actually get a proper ABS module from a car and rig that all up to function with a brake pedal just because, you know, because it was fun, because it was a cool thing to do. So that's the sort of attitude they have towards things. It's fun, it's interesting, they want to make the best products they can, they want to listen to feedback from people like me and people like you guys out there. And that's what we're going to get coming down the line as they progress, because they are only a relatively young company in the world of sim racing. Anyway, that was a lot of waffle, but it was relevant because when you're buying into someone new or into any company, it's nice to know that they're on your side rather than just trying to make a few quid. Obviously, they have to make a profit. They're a business. But businesses that care about their customers are far better to buy from, in my opinion and experience, than businesses that just want to make a few quid, like Logitech or Thrustmaster. Thrustmaster. You can't even get hold of them easily if you need to. You know, Not helpful. Anyway, let's get back to this review. Uh, I've showed the quick release, build quality, Excellent, spot on, fit and finish is great. Oh, actually, and I am a picky mofo, fit and finish. One thing I don't like, and I don't know whether you're gonna see this or not, the, the lines that run down here, the fins, they don't quite line up with the two halves of the case. And that is just a little niggle to me. It's one of those things that I can't unsee once I've seen it. Now it may be that if I undo the four bolts that hold it clamped together, you can just turn it a fraction and do them back up. I'm assuming it's probably dowled, in which case you won't be able to do that though. But it's just one little thing that, but I was looking at it, I was looking at these LED strips when they were lit up particularly, and I was like, that doesn't quite line up. And I was like, no, and it's just something I can't unsee. But aside from that slight mismatch of, of fins, the build quality, the fit and the finish, is excellent. As I say, it might be that if you slacken the bolts off, you can just nip them up, but maybe I'll play one day and see. Because you are encouraged, well not encouraged, but you are able to remove this whole front section here to use their front mount. You would literally remove the front piece and this slots like in between and then you clamp it back up. And they've even got those little like ridges and fins that I was just talking about on here and on the bottom here so that it continues to flow from the front of the wheelbase all the way to the back. Whether they line up quite properly or not, we won't know because I didn't use this. I used the other one that I'm about to show you in a minute. You don't have to use um, these, obviously. You can just bolt them down using the T-nuts that are inbuilt. But I used this one. In fact, I'll put up, shall I put up a video now? Yeah, I'll put a video now of me doing a little like showcase of it on the rig. Um, and just how it was fitted. And you'll see the power button and the, and the um, emergency stop button on the corners on what looks like a little base plate. They're sticking out like wings either side of the wheelbase. Uh, you can fit those buttons straight to your aluminium profile. You can put them wherever you want, really. And the, the plate that I've used there, the bottom mount plate, it doesn't have to be used how you can see it in the video clip here. You could just put it straight onto a onto a table and put bolts through whatever you want really. But I used it as you can see there because I like the idea of putting the buttons either side. So let's just have a little close up now of these buttons fitted here. They literally bolt on from the underneath with four little bolts and it's the same either side. And again, these connections are what plug into the back of the wheelbase where I showed you power and emergency stop earlier. And the way this secures to the wheelbase is you go into the T-nuts on the bottom using four of the holes here, and then I used another three here to bolt to the wheelbase mount on my GT Amiga Prime Lite. And that worked flawlessly, but you've seen it in use. I may as well put some, a quick clip of me using it now up. But you also see it in use in my GT Amiga Prime Lite review. You know, when I was demonstrating how there was no flex in the cockpit itself. You know, I was literally pulling and pushing 
on this wheelbase and wheel through its quick release with this plate in the bottom as well. And there was just no movement on anything, not on the, the prime light, not in the wheelbase, not in the quick release, not in the steering wheel. So um, it was just a great experience all around. Anyway, these little, little button modules here, they, they come with like a little back plate attached to them and you undo the four bolts to remove the back plate and then you can just bolt them onto this. The other thing you can do, because once you've taken those, once you've taken these plates off, you, like you can see inside here, you can actually pop the button out itself and the buttons are nice quality. They've got a good solid, I mean, you're not gonna be able to tell from the sound of the click, but maybe you are. They have a nice solid sound to them and a really smooth, solid operation with good weight to them. I do like a nice quality switch. Um, yeah, you can remove the switches themselves from there and you can put them in these holes either end of this front mount here and here once this is fitted to the steering wheel itself. As I said, I didn't use this one. And these are optional, by the way. They don't just come with the wheelbase. In fact, let's... Let's have a quick goosey. At, I'll put a screenshot up actually of these. Um, there's one, two, three, four, four different options. In fact, let's get, I may as well do some screen capture because it's not quite going to be able to fit all on one screen. So you've got a side mount, the bottom mount, which is what I used. And then you've got the, the bottom mount with tilt, which obviously is self-explanatory. It allows you to tilt the, <laughs> wheelbase up and down as does the first mount here this side mount here has tilt as well and then there is the front mount that I just showed you a second ago with the little buttons installed in the front there so they are the four different mounting options in addition to just bolting it down using the four t-nuts that come pre-fitted to the bottom of the wheelbase anyway so quite a lot of flexibility when it comes to installation there but yes this is the one I used you see in my driving footage because I thought it looked quite cool having those buttons just hanging out on the side there. Now, oh, okay, that's a good point. These, these somewhat hefty brackets here are what you also use with the front mount as well. They come in from the sides of your aluminium profile rig. Let's get those out of the way. Oh, I may as well show you the power supply. I did briefly mention that when you, can, when you upgrade from, say, La Prima to Forte or Invicta, you would then get a larger power supply as part of that upgrade package along with a new PCB to drop in to get more out of the motor. This is the Forte one, 48 volt output, 8.33 amps, just shy of 400 watts, 399.84. So a fairly hefty power supply. Although in my hand now, it feels very light after having just held that up to the camera a few times. But yes, beefy power supply. Little LED in the front there to show it's powered. Good quality. Every, actually, everything lines up nicely on here, almost better than it did on the wheelbase itself. Obviously, I got a UK plug with mine. The cable is soft and flexible, and we've got you know a fairly common style power plug, six pin there as well. So unremarkable, but decent quality, which is all it needs to be. We've got the USB-C cable here, which again is nice and soft and pliable. You know, we all know cheap cables can often feel very stiff and just quite obviously cheap. These feel nice, USB-C, obviously. Um, Logitech, pay attention. Micro USB is old. So yeah, that's decent as well, as you would expect. You also get bags of nuts and bolts to allow you to use the different um, mounting options. They come with the different mounting options. They don't come with the wheelbase because you wouldn't need them. So um, that's everything physical about the wheelbase, I believe. So how is the driving experience? Which of course is the paramount and most important question. The driving experience is excellent. It's right up there with the likes of SimiCube um, you know, and even a step up slightly from my DD1. And the, one of the reasons for that is the performance of the motor and the resolution of the encoder. Now, when we talk about resolution, I'll give a really easy to understand example of how this works for those of you that don't know. And forgive me if I'm teaching people things they already know. 
This has four million points of resolution per 360 degree rotation. That means if I turn, let me put the wheel on, in fact, if I turn the wheel from here, that's 180, that's 360 back to the top. That rotation is split into four million different points. If we had a resolution of four, for example, you'd have top, 90 degrees, bottom, and 270 degrees. So that means the wheel would either be there, 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 or there. There'd be no in-between. So four million points of resolution equates to an extremely smooth wheel. No cogging, no stepping, because if you can feel one of those four million points, you're some sort of superhuman with fantastic fidelity through your fingers, because I definitely can't. To me, in operation, it is super smooth. As it sits here now powered down, I can feel the different points of what must be the magnets around the outside edge of the motor. Less so with the wheel on, but when I do it with my fingers like this, I can just feel them. But that's perfectly normal for this type of setup. As soon as you power it up, you know, the magnetic fields are, are present, it, it goes away. Um, but yeah, four million points of resolution, absolutely ridiculous. That translates to extreme smoothness and accuracy as well. And fidelity, detail, information from the road, information about what your car and what your tires are doing. Exceptional. In addition to that, we have something called slew rate, which is basically a rate of change. How quickly the motor can go from, say, a very low torque setting to its maximum torque setting and back down again. That responsiveness. And that literally translates to how responsive, how fast, the wheel can react to the telemetry coming from whatever sim it is that we are using. Now, they've given us some figures in a graph here somewhere, and this is their in-house testing. So again, those of you who are skeptical could say this is biased, Carl, because the information is from them and not from an independent party. I don't have the equipment here to test something like slew rate. It's just not something I can do. But their own figures, they compare, so the, 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 they've got three comparisons here, the Forte, the Invicta, and the SimuQ Pro. And the Forte is the one we have here. So their average slew rate is 6.5 newton meters a second. That means the torque can change by 6.5 newton meters uh, per millisecond, sorry, not per second, per millisecond. And like the, the Invicta, for example, has an average of 9.2. So the, the Invicta model, the one up, is faster to respond like by, well, it's almost 50% faster to respond than what this one is. The SimuQ Pro averages 6.1. Now, assuming you're not skeptical and think the figures are made up just for sales and marketing purposes, what we can see here is that even the Forte has slight, slightly faster response than what the SimuQ base does. Um, and that's, as I say, what translates to how quickly what's happening in Sim gets to our fingertips on our wheel. So an extremely smooth wheelbase and an extremely responsive wheelbase. Both things that are important, coupled with 80 newton meters of torque. And in my opinion, 80 newton meters of torque is more than most people need. I don't run 80 newton meters of torque as a rule. If it needs to spike that high because I'm in a car that has no power assisted steering and I'm cornering in a really sharp corner at high speed. It's nice to have it there for the brief time you'd need it. But for me, something like 10 or 12 newton meters tends to be where I hover around when I'm sim racing. Otherwise you just get tired, man. These things are tough. Now, talking about um, the peak torque, another important figure here is how long a wheelbase can maintain its peak torque for. This wheelbase, oh no, that's the Invicta, let me have a look. Um, this wheelbase can maintain its peak torque for 140 seconds. So that's just, just a bit over two minutes. So you can imagine you've loaded it up, we're in a sharp corner at high speed, and you've got your force feedback up, it's peaked, and it's just like, and then two minutes and 20 seconds later, you're still there holding your wheel. So that's far, far longer than any of us would ever actually need the peak torque to be held for. Now, it doesn't quite hold bang on. It does very grand, I mean, it drops within one or two newton meters. It, it drops over that 140 seconds before it then actually drops dramatically and you kind of get a little bit of oscillation of power. 
but you're never going to need to, unless you're just going around in a tight circle for two minutes and 20 seconds, that is more than enough um, peak torque uh, for it to hold. So we've got plenty of power, we've got a ridiculous resolution, same as the Simucube, I might add, it's not, um, that four million points of resolution is not exclusive to Acer so Tech, the Simucube wheelbases also have four million. I believe the Fanatic stuff is only, it's either 65,000 or 650,000, I can't quite remember now, but either way, dramatically less um, than what the Simucube or these Acer Tech bases have. So plenty of power, it can hold it for plenty of time, very, very smooth and super responsive. There's just nothing bad to say about this wheelbase yet. Um, the quick release, I, I forgot to say, but it connects using these physical pins at the bottom there, rather than a wireless connection, because they didn't want their pogo pins, so they're springy. What they didn't want was the potential unreliability of a wireless connection where you might get interference or latency. So they've gone with um, a six pin configuration there that just slots onto the bottom of the quick release on those pads there. And because there's no play in this quick release, um, there's gonna be no issues with connectivity there either. Now they do do a universal quick release that would be basically this piece here and you could then bolt your own wheel to it. That is, is it's being shipped to me, but at the time of review, I haven't received it yet. So I wasn't able to test, say, Dirt Rally, for example, because playing a rally game with a Formula steering wheel, really not very good. It just doesn't work. Um, but it is on its way, so I'll do a separate review of that, I guess, when it arrives, because I'm a big rally fan, as you guys probably know. Um, and I looked forward to playing some Dirt Rally with this, and of course, <laughs> I couldn't do it with, with this wheel. Well, I could have done, but it would have just been extremely weird. Imagine trying to drift around a corner and you know, trying, to, trying to catch the wheel when there's nothing there. It just wouldn't work. But yeah, that universal um, quick release is on its way to me. It has been shipped. So they're not, they're not trying to lock you into their ecosystem as far as accessories go. Um, they very much want you to buy in potentially at the bottom end and upgrade for the essentials, the wheelbases, the pedals, things like that. But as far as steering wheels go, you know, they've got the facility there for you to use whatever wheel you want, which is great for me because I have a you know, genuine Sparco wheel that I use for rallying and it would annoy me if that wasn't something I could do because this is probably gonna be my wheelbase of choice now going forward. My Fnatic DD one's probably gonna come off. I think I'm gonna stick with this because it is noticeably better. Um, so yeah, that's, that's what's gonna happen there. So where are we up to? Right, the final thing then will be the software and I'll just put a little video clip of the software up there going through a couple of the menus just to show you what it is. You've got basic and advanced options and there's enough there for you to be able to tune your wheel how you would like to tune it, your wheel base, sorry. I had no issues um, finding comfortable and familiar settings for me to get to get this feeling how I wanted it to feel. No problems whatsoever. Unlike the, the Thrustmaster one that I reviewed the other day that just had four presets and that was all you could do. Ridiculous. This is absolutely fine. The software works just great. The firmware updates are very easy to do as well, so no problems. I won't do a step-by-step -step of the software. It's not necessary for this review. Just rest assured, it's great. It all works as it should do. Um, I think that's probably it for the wheelbase. I could almost do a separate review for the steering wheel, but I won't. I'll, I'll include it in this one just to save people time. Let's just bring up the price of this steering wheel before we go into it, Forte Formula steering wheel, because wheels can be very expensive. And when you pay a lot of money for a steering wheel, it needs to be good. So this is 546 euros excluding VAT. Now, what was the price of that Mosul one I reviewed the other day? That was around four or 500 pounds, something like that. So this is more expensive, but this is night and day difference between this and that last one. And also the um, Fnatic one I've got over there, their little cheapo, it's like 250 quid GT freewheel. You know, fine for 250 quid, but when you pick up something like this, you know, and again, compared to the Moser, you pick this up and you go, oh, oh, okay. That's what a good steering wheel feels like. The, the rotary encoders, the buttons, the dials, the seven-way funkies, they all just feel absolutely 
rock solid. Top, top quality. As is the fit and finish of this. As, as you can see, there's carbon fiber everywhere. I'll go through the actual construction of it in a second. Um, oh yeah, weird paddle configuration. Um, that's on there to demonstrate that you can swip, swip? You can swap these out by just slackening this. In fact, let me show you. Yeah, you, you, you can get different, different modules so that will come with um, different paddles. So either just normal magnetic paddles like this one here, or like, uh, this, like these ones here are your analog ones that you'd use for clutches, uh, etc. And they can all be interchanged wherever you want. And to do that, you see these little Allen keys here, you just slacken that off. The Allen key is of course included. That slides open like that. And that then allows access to, <laughs> magnets quite strong, allows access to another Allen key that is just inside here. And you just undo that. As you can see, the module's already getting loose. And once that's undone enough, you can literally lift it away like so, and then grab whatever of the other ones you want and put it on in its place. So that is a really nice, quick, easy way to do it. And as you can see, we've got space there for one, space there for one, and the one that's currently fitted to the back of the wheel there. So that's a nice little touch. Um, you know, it's little things like this just make life easy, along with this ridiculous, ridiculously efficient and solid quick release mechanism. Now, let me go through some of the specs of this wheel. And whilst I read out the specs, I'll put up a little video of me going around the wheel showing all the different LED functionality. So, this is a injection molded chassis with a composite material consisting of carbon fiber, glass, and plastic. This provides a very high natural rigidity and strength. Uh, you would have seen in the clip earlier of me demonstrating the quick release, how there was no flex in that. You'll also notice there was no flex in this wheel, and there really isn't. Um, the outside is laser etched forged carbon, and that's what we can see literally on the outside of the wheel, and it does look really, really nice in the flesh as well. Inside the wheel, there is a metal spider interface to ensure a no flex, and no play steering wheel. And again, as I say, there really is no flex in this wheel, and I'll demonstrate that again in a second close up to the camera, but I mean, the video I showed earlier, you can see it anyway. Um, option to add easy to mount clutch and input paddles, I demonstrated that a second ago, there is 128 individual input options. You can customize and map all the button switches and codes and paddles as you would expect, top quality button switches and encoders. Again, as I mentioned in the very beginning, these do feel absolutely spot on, probably the best I've felt. And there was 49 fully customizable ARGB LEDs you can use. You've got your rev, your rev one that runs across the top, and then you've got ones you can use as flags as well, and you can do whatever you want with those. Uh, the quick release is the quick release. So this is just a, honestly, it's one of the nicest wheels I've used. And some of you are gonna be sitting there going, oh, Carl, you're just a shield for Acer Tech. I'm really not. Um, as I said, they even encourage us not to be clickbaity in our titles and our descriptions and things like this. What I am is an enthusiastic sim racer that really enjoys top quality products. Even from a technical point of view, I find this stuff so interesting. You know, not just from how it is to use, but how it's constructed, how it's made. When I see this quick release, I was like, how has nobody thought of doing that before? You know, especially when you compare it to the Fnatic one, where you, you try, you pull it, you, you undo it, unswish the rubber, you pull the collar forward, and you're wiggling it round, and who hasn't hit themselves in the face with a Fnatic wheel whilst trying to get it off of their DD1 or DD2? And yet something as simple as this, just a V, v taper on the back of the quick release and on the wheelbase that just slots in and doesn't have any play or any movement and can be removed like that, you know? It's little, little technical bits of engineering like this that really get me excited almost more than the actual driving experience in some instances. But like everything on this is just top quality. Even the rubber grips at the sides here, they just feel nice to use. But yeah, I mean, I, I can't really, can I bend this at all? I think, okay, I can, I can make these bits here that are hanging down. I can make the, oh no, I think it's the rubber actually. 
Yeah, I thought I was flexing it. I wasn't. It's just the rubber um, at the ends here feel is, is just squishing a tiny little bit. But you can't, it just doesn't flex, you know, and you wouldn't, you wouldn't be doing that anyway, would you? But it's, it's just a really, really top quality wheel. Um, you know, and very customizable with the various paddle options, the RGB LEDs, top quality buttons, encoders, everything. It's just all, it's just so nice to have something that really is good and that doesn't, I mean, it's not cheap though. If that's 546 plus VAT, we're looking at what's just shy of 700 pound maybe, but you get what you pay for in this case. And that is at least a bonus. Uh, presumably this is their Forte one, so maybe they'll do La Prima wheel as well. And perhaps the Invicta wheel will be a step up, you know, and a step down like they've done with everything else. But for what I've got right here, right now, I have absolutely enjoyed testing and using this. Um, and as soon as I get the universal quick release so I can bolt my rally wheel to it, this is probably what's gonna be going on to my main GT Amiga Prime cockpit over there in the background. Now I've also got the Invicta wheelbase here to test. And essentially we gain a couple of extra LED strips down the side and we gain some more torque and some more response. I have a sneaky suspicion that I am not gonna be able to tell the difference in responsiveness because this is already ridiculously responsive. The resolution remains the same at 4 million points of resolution per rotation. Um, and the torque obviously is going to be evident, but I would never run 27 newton meters of torque anyway. So I have a feeling the review of that is gonna be much like this is, just with more power and slightly more response that I probably can't even notice. But we shall see when I get to review that, you know, in a few weeks time or whenever it is, I get round to it. But for today, I'm happy to recommend not only the wheelbase, but the wheel also, and the company themselves, because my personal experience with dealing with them and talking to them has really impressed me with their attitude towards designing and making products to be as good as they can be, taking on feedback from people like myself and the community, making physical changes, um, to the products, making software and firmware adjustments to give us the best experience we can. And at prices that are appropriate for the performance and the quality that they are supplying us with. There's nothing worse than paying a lot of money for something that feels cheap. We all know who I'm talking about with that, don't we? Um, when you pay a lot of money for something, it needs to feel like you've paid a lot of money for it. And that is what we've got here today. A great quality wheelbase, even if the little things don't quite line up. Um, and an excellent quick release mechanism, which is beyond simple. I just, when I, when I got this, I got my missus, I was like, Katie, come upstairs, come upstairs. She's like, what? I said, you've got to come and try out this quick release. She said, what are you talking about? I said, because she appreciates engineering as well. You know, we, we build engines together at work and things like this. So I'm like, just come over this wheel. I said, just get two fingers, squeeze the top and lift it up. And she's like, no. I said, yep, that is literally how easy it comes off. Unbelievable. So even your wives might be impressed with the quick release on this Acer Tech wheelbase and wheel. Um, and then yes, the wheel itself, this wheel, I'm, I'm super impressed with the quality of that as well. And those of you that know my channel and know me know that I don't just blow smoke up anyone's bottoms. If something's good, I say it's good. If something's bad, I definitely say it's bad. But this, I'm happy to say, is all good. There will be a very enthusiastic link in the description for you to go through and pre-order or buy this if it's in stock. I think they were saying, so yeah, first shipment's expected late January. So the f people that have pre-ordered them already should already have theirs shipped out. And then all the pre-orders are expected to be served by the end of next month, which is March. So if you're pre-ordering now, because what does it say? Yeah, I can pre-order now. Okay, yes, yeah, so if you pre-order one now, you'll get it by the end of next month. At the latest, this is. They're shipping them as and when they come in, as and when they can. So I think we've covered everything. We've been over construction of the wheelbase and the wheel. We've been over the spec of the wheelbase, quick release and the wheel. I've shown you the different mounts, the different buttons, the different paddle options, the driving experience and the software experience as well. So that really, I think, just about covers it. Well, I've got 46 minutes. Wow, one of my longest reviews ever, I reckon this is. I'm getting close to Will at Boosting Media and Barry at the Sim Racing Garage with videos of 46 minutes long. Anyway, enough of my waffle. 
Thank you all very much for watching and take it easy.